Hi guys, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. I'm going to show you how to play that. Now, what I've done is I've just come up with a few harmonics progression. You just heard one there and there are three more. I'm going to show you all of them. And what I've done is I've just recorded it into Logic. You can use a looping pedal. And this is just a really good way of practicing. I actually do recommend that you have some software, a bit like I've got I'm using Logic Pro, because you have to be precise to record it in in the first place. You have to work on your timing. So let's start off. I'll explain things as we go. We're basically in the key of D and these harmonics all fit to that key, which is why, you know, this solo stuff is just in D major. But first things first, I'm going to show you the progression. So I'm playing the D at the fifth fret of the A string and I'm playing the harmonics with the little finger. I'm barring. If you want to, you can use your third finger if you can, but little finger for me reduces the stretch. So my wrist remains quite straight. If you don't know what a harmonic is, it's just in this case, I'm over the seventh fret, just right directly over the metal fret itself. And you touch lightly, and you pluck and you kind of come away. Now, since these are chords, we're going to be playing slightly differently with the plucking hand. So instead of rest strokes where you pluck a string, come to rest on the next string. We're going to do free strokes and use the thumb. So I'm using the thumb for the root note, the D in this case. And a free stroke is where you pluck and you kind of come away from the body of the bass. Not so much that you almost get like a slap sound, just quite gen gentle. get this really nice chord. So the rhythm I'm doing is this. Do it again. This next one's a bit of a stretch. Directly lifted from Portrait of Tracy by Jaco Pastorius. There's a bit of a... <laughs> the most amazing sound, so I've nicked that completely. Give you an alternative as well to make it a bit easier but the first uh, the one i'm doing i'm playing b on the seventh fret with my third finger and you've got a really stretch first finger onto the fourth fret harmonic of the d string whilst the little finger is over the seventh fret harmonic on the g string same free style kind of technique going on here i'm going thumb index middle Then it, you drop down to the A and the D strings and exactly the same. You may feel a little bit of a pain here, so do stop if that's the case. I'll give you the easy version. You just place your first finger now on the B, and then use second and third fingers on the seventh fret of the D and the G, the harmonics there. Then we've got a G chord, so put your first finger on the G, third fret, E string. Harmonics are really great because they work on your touch. You've got to be really in control. And of course, we've got a bit of stretch going on here as well. So very good for technique. So we've got the G with your first finger, and then I'm playing the harmonics on the fifth fret, barring again with the little finger. That's the rhythm. Then third finger on the fourth fret harmonic on the D string. being as nimble as I can. Very good for the third and fourth fingers, this one. That last harmonic is the little finger playing the fifth fret harmonic on the A string. Then you can play this in a number of different ways. There I just went second finger on the A on the fifth fret E string. And again, I'm barring little finger harmonics on the fifth fret of the D and the G. Really lovely chord there. So that gives you this with... There are 
there are tons of different patterns of D major, D major pentatonic, but just to keep things a little simple for now, I'm playing the D on the 10th fret of the E string. And you've got that two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four fingering pattern there. You can keep going. The key signature of D major is F and C sharp. So you've just got D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. And if you know this and you know the names of the notes, you can play through and just learn the notes as you go and you'll know also what works. So in this little, little riff lick kind of thing here, so I'm playing D on the 12th fret of the D string, going to the fourth, same fret on the G string. Right next to that is the major third, and you've got a lovely little... Using expressive techniques like hammer-on, pull-offs, vibrato, and that was all pentatonic. I'm going to show you that pattern because it's really useful. We've got fret 10, 12, 14 on the E string. And then 12, 14 on the A and the D. Two frets higher to the fret 16, still on the D string. And then 14, 16 on the G string. Such a brilliant pattern for A sounding good, all those notes sound good over this progression, and you can do lots of expressive hammer-ons, pull-offs, etc., and it will sound great. Another chord progression for you here, same key. Now D major is related to B minor, so I've gone that direction here and going. A bit easier this one. So we start on G, we got G, and then we got the barred harmonics going on, fret five of the uh, harmonic of the A and the D strings. Always thumb, index, and middle fingers going on here. And I'm just shifting across quite quickly to the fifth fret and doing the same pattern. Harmonics now on the seventh fret. Then drop that little finger down to the B again, seventh fret E string. And here we go, we've got a big stretch here, so be careful, but I am playing the fourth fret harmonics on the D and the G with the first finger. Go back to that other easier shape if you want. Second time round. I was doing that Jacko pattern again. Very simple chord progression. Going okay, from G, A to B minor. Now these are exactly the same notes as D major, but I'm now shifting focus not to D major pentatonic, but I'm going to B minor pentatonic. So starting on the seventh fret of the E string. Bit of blue scale. So that's uh, seven, seven, nine, fret seven and nine on the G string. And if you just go to the 10th fret, that note there, that's the blues note. Let's play with this. Now what I did at the end there, I was just playing notes of B natural minor. I was doing it here, starting on the B on the ninth fret of the D string. So this is a pattern you definitely should know. 
starting on fret seven, nine, ten on the both the E and the A strings, and fret seven, nine on the D string. And that pattern there is just up the octave. See how that fits perfectly over these chord progressions? This is a really good way of practicing scales because it sounds musical. Okay, here we've got another chord progression. Exactly the same as before, but I'm just isolating the G chord to the A chord. I'll show you that first. So we've got the G on the third fret of the E string. Got those fifth fret harmonics on the D and the G barred with a the little finger. Then fourth fret D string with your third finger. Fifth fret A string with your little finger. That lovely A chord there. Second finger on the A, fifth fret. Barring the harmonics at the fifth fret, D and the G. See, I'm, I'm kind of twisting around here. Just to get that finger into place, you know, you don't always have to have your hands set in one position. You can do different things. And when you're playing chords, it's a little different to how you might normally play the bass. That is the four to the five chord, okay? A G to an A. We've got D, E, F sharp, G. G is the four and A is the five. So it's the four to the five chord in the key of D major. And when you isolate them, as I have done there, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to play D major, but starting on the G. And that gives you G Lydian, okay? And this is a great little practice for that. It's just literally... Remember that pattern we played earlier? Just do that again, D major, but start on G. And you'll have this G Lydian. It's a beautiful sounding mode. It's the fourth mode of the major scale. And it looks exactly like a major scale, except the fourth note is upper fret, and you get this lovely sound. I'm going to play it again with this. It's a mode I really, really love. So this chord progression, you can work on that. Okay, last chord progression. This is probably the easiest one to play. So we've got an E minor chord here. I'm playing the E third finger, seventh fret of the A string. And when you're playing chords, I should have probably mentioned this before, really have the finger curled and play on the fingertips so that you're not accidentally hitting any other strings. And barring those fifth fret harmonics on the D and the G with first finger. That rhythm. Sometimes balancing my little finger here just so that the other fingers are nice and steady. Doing the Jacko shape again. Of course, do that one if you want. And again, we're sort of switching to a minor focus here, and I'm going E minor to B minor. So there's a couple of ways you can think about this that absolutely doesn't matter which one you do. Since we're starting on the E minor, I can think of this as E Dorian, and that comes from D major. You could play the same shape as before, D major. And just don't play the first note, just start on the second note. Try that. Okay, that works. When you're soloing, you know, you don't want to play just a scale up and down. It sounds a bit a bit wooden, a bit robotic. So to sound more musical, you've got to be able to move to any note naturally and fluidly. That's why you need to learn the shapes. And then you're playing around with rhythms, you're playing around with articulations, and you're thinking in terms of phrases.
So, you know. you know. Stopping and leaving gaps. Playing around with a few notes and then, you know, this is how you'll create lovely phrases. The other way you can think about that is just playing B minor. They're all the same notes, but let's try that. I record, I think it's 90 beats per minute. I got that drum beat, which you can download. I put that on and then I just recorded these in. And now I record for a living, so I'm always listening to a click track. I'm always listening to drums. And that way you can practice your timing. Timing is just key to playing something that sounds good. Okay, obvious, but you need to do it a lot. So that's why if you do have some sort of software like this, it's a very, very good practice tool. Equally, as I said before, you could have your loop pedal, but of course you're going with your own time if you do that, unless you have an external source and you can, you know, things can get more complicated that way. But this is such a great way of practicing, and then you can practice your scales and your soloing over the top of that. If there's anything in this lesson that, you know, you didn't get, do leave a comment below, let me know. But I'll be doing more lessons like this, but I hope you have fun with that one. Do let me know how you get on. And thanks very much for watching. See you next time.